Good afternoon and Merry Christmas. Please stand if you are able to begin the service. This night is like no other night. It is a time to dream and sing our way to Bethlehem. The children will show us how to go. 
The little town we seek sits in the hill country, some 10 miles south of Jerusalem. For thousands of years, the houses have gathered there on the hilltop like a family breaking bread. Bethlehem means house of bread. In the center of the village is a small inn. And on this night, it is overflowing with people seeking sleep and a place to eat. Behind the inn is a dark stable. A gray donkey chews his barley and the straw while a weary cow rests after the day's plowing in the valley. The sheep nearby are nearly asleep. All is still and quiet in the little town. As night gathers, the last two travelers come slowly up the road. Look, there is a young woman about to be a mother. She is with her husband. They are Joseph and Mary from Nazareth. They have walked for six days to come to this city where King David was born so long ago. They have come like so many others because the Roman emperor wants to count each one so he can take their money as a tax. But it is late and Mary is so weary. Where will they sleep? There is no room at the inn. They decide to sleep with the animals. Hear what the, hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
stars rising slowly in the sky. All of creation holds its breath. Suddenly from the stable comes the cry of a newborn child. Mary gently wraps the baby in a blanket and lays him in the feed box that his father has filled with straw. In the hills outside Bethlehem, shepherds watch their sheep. All at once, the dark is lost in light, and in the midst of the light is something even brighter, the faces of the angels. The fearful shepherds then hear music in the sky, and a voice says clearly, do not be afraid. Listen, I bring you news of great joy, a joy to be shared by all people. Today, in the city of David, a Savior is born. He is Christ the Lord. Then more angels appear, a whole heavenly host of them, praising God and singing. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to all people everywhere. The shepherds run with joy across the fields to Bethlehem to the barn beyond the inn. There they find the holy family and creep forward, overwhelmed with mystery, to find nativity itself in the center of all that wonder. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks go God. Mutations, 
invariants are part of our general lexicon. And then there are the acronyms that you and I have become all too familiar with. PPE, mRNA, CDC, and more sadly, ICU. Not because this one felt new, but because they were sadly ubiquitous in the news and still are. Previously unknown corporations suddenly became not just household names, but activities like I'm getting my Pfizer or my Moderna, or I'll Zoom you tomorrow. And now all of us are slowly and probably unwillingly learning the Greek alphabet as variants break through even vaccinated communities. I don't know about you, but even though we've learned a lot of new words, these past two years just feel old. No one quite knows why the church settled on December 25th as the Feast of the Nativity. In the old story that the church fathers wanted to align the birth of Christ with the pagan festival to Saturn has been mostly debunked, but I love that it is four days after the winter solstice, what it means for those of us who live in the Northern Hemisphere. On Tuesday, December 21st, in Santa Ana, the sun rose at 6.52 a.m. and set at 4.47 p.m., a mere nine hours and 55 minutes of sunlight. Today, on the eve of Christmas, the sun rose one minute sooner and will set one minute later. Tomorrow, Christmas Day, we will get two more minutes of sunlight, just an extra glimmer of light piercing just a bit longer through the darkness. Christmas is an old holiday for Christians, but it is also a time for the new small spark of light, of hope, the tiny flicker of joy to nurture in the hearts and souls who yearn to find a way through the darkness, through our dark times. Christmas is a moment to open your hearts just enough to let that extra two minutes of divine light come in and then illuminate what other new things God may be doing in your life and in mine. Stephen Patterson, a Chicago-based writer, wrote a poem recently titled God's Own Language, in which he narrates his experience going to a church made up of immigrants from India. The Hindi service is at 9 a.m., the Gujarati service is at 10. Peterson chooses the latter service to join in, along with gray-haired men and women from the subcontinent. Listening to a Christmas service in a language he doesn't understand, but that brings joy and comfort to this new group of Americans, Peter, Peterson remembers in his childhood attending his grandparents' church's Christmas Eve service, sung at, and said in the language that they loved, Swedish. Peterson recalls giggling at the funny intonations of his grandparents' native tongue, and then while his father tries to shush him, his grandmother whispers, hear that? That is God's own language. Peterson, Peterson's enclosed rhyme poem ends this way. Now I am back among South Asian saints. The Gujarati dawn, it's almost noon. They say, come back. They're adding English soon, an answer to their children's old complaints. I promise I'll return. I hope I do. I thought that all had changed, but what a change. Though Swedish, English, Hindi get exchanged. God's language is whatever makes us new. God's language is whatever makes us new. In a tiny village in first century Palestine, probably on a 
cold, dark night. God did something new when a baby was born and gently placed in a feeding trough. On Christmas Eve 2021, God is doing something new in the darkness of our pandemic days, waiting to be born in your hearts and mind, in a language that we may not initially understand, but that we feel is the love language of God shining ever more brightly in our cracked and broken hearts. This evening, cherish this extra bit of light. Nurture it. Let it grow, glow with the warmth of God's love. And let each of our extra bits of light and life and love illuminate this place, this community, and the world so that everyone can see what new things God is doing, what new language God is speaking. Amen. Radiant, glorious God, creator of all that is, we join our voices with the songs of angels this holy night to praise your name for all of life. Glory God of the unexpected, who graced a humble stable with your most extraordinary child, Jesus, we are awed by the generosity of your gift. Lord, 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 Lord. God of limitless energy, inspire the leaders of this community, the nation, and the world with hope that they may seek ways for all people to prosper in peace. Lord, Lord. Compassionate God, wrap the world in your love that all victims of violence, illness, trouble, or despair may be sheltered and released from all adversity. Lord. Loving God, move us beyond our fears and prejudices into the light of your love, where we may rest secure and risk great things in your name. Lord. Gracious and life-giving God, who electrified the night with the radiance of a child, Help us so to receive your gift of love in Christ, that we may become beacons of love in this complex and wondrous world. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another in the name of the Lord. Peace, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, you may be seated. Welcome to Church of the Messiah. I'm delighted to see you. My name is Jim Lee. I'm the acting director of Church of the Messiah. I also want to welcome those of us who are joining us via Zoom. Welcome. It's great to have you either in person or online. Um, I want to uh, mention a couple of announcements. Um, there will not be a Christmas Day service tomorrow. However, however we will be resuming Christmas service or uh, services on Sunday. We have services at 8 a.m. 10 a.m. in English and at noontime in Spanish. So you, I invite you to come and join us for those services on Sunday. Um, because of the Christmas holiday, the church office will be closed on Monday. If um, you can reach us on Tuesday, um, we 
ABC. Uh, if you are here for the first time or visiting with us or haven't been here for a while, um, there are a couple of things that, uh, as we turn our attention to the altar behind me, just to, a couple of things to mention. First off, out of an abundance of, cure, of, of, of caution, we are serving communion in one kind, which means we are distributing bread, but not wine. And this is to make sure that we can be as safe as possible. But please know that bread is totally fine. Um, receiving bread is fully fine, uh, liturgically or sacramentally. Um, if you've not received communion in an Episcopal church before, um, uh, let me just give you some pointers. You just come to the altar rail, you can may stand or you may kneel. Um, if you put your hands out, I would place uh, bread in your hands and you can then consume the bread. Um, if you prefer not to receive uh, bread, you can come up for a blessing, simply cross your arms and uh, I can provide you um, a blessing. Um, but however you wish to participate, I hope you know that uh, at this, in this church, in this place, whoever you are, wherever you find yourself on the journey of faith, you are welcome at Christ's table and to receive a bread made holy. Uh, it's one of our Christmas Eve traditions at our 4 p.m. service that children are welcome to join me at the altar as I celebrate the Eucharist. So uh, when it comes time, I'm going to invite those of you who are children or children at heart to come join me at the altar and then bear witness to uh, what I do at the altar and then rejoin your families when the, the, the Eucharistic prayer is, is completed. Um, I think that's it. Uh, now I invite you to give generously from the resources of your life and labor on this Christmas Eve so that Church and Messiah can continue to do God's work of justice and peace in this community and in the, in, in the world. You may, um, when the offering plates come, come comes by, you can either place your donation in the plate directly or may use one of the donation envelopes in the pew rack in front of you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Welcome again and Merry Christmas.
No, no pressure. No. Please stand as you're able. God dwells in you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets, and their forces, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation. But we turned against you and betrayed your trust. We turned against each other. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, chorus the prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in the hope, we claim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, God of power, ever and ever. O Son of the Highs, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son of the So God, we who have been redeemed by Christ and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now Christ's work of redemption and in this offering of thanksgiving, we celebrate Christ's death and resurrection as we await the day of Christ's coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Ishmael, God of Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, Leah, and Hagar, God, Father and Mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, Open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world without us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in Christ's name. With the Lord, Accept these prayers and praise God through our through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, the Lord is in heaven, thy kingdom come. I will be done on earth as it is now. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and that you forgive those who trespass against us, and give us not our temptation, but deliver us from evil. The divine is the kingdom and the power forever and ever. Amen.
We all are one bread, one body. So these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Everyone is welcome to Christ's gift.
together. Welcome, welcome, Jesus Christ, our infant Savior, baby who makes every bird holy. In me, like the shepherds, I witness in the stable a new kind of love. Return to our work of joy. In me, for whom the heavens have opened, proclaiming that God is with us. In me, we are fed on living bread and drunk of wine in heaven. The instance of your peace day by day. Amen. May God the Father, who has loved the eternal Son from before the foundation of the world, shed that love upon you, his children. May God the Son, by his incarnation, gather into one thing, one thing earthly and heavenly, fill you with joy and peace. May the Holy Spirit, by whose overshadowing Mary became the God bearer, give you grace to carry the good news of Christ. The blessing of God, our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer, be with you, those you love, and everyone you encounter this Christmas Eve and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>